Hey everybody, hobo 4 craft aka Mr. Hobo, back with another StarCraft 2 shellcast, and it's going to be Mouse Morrow spawning on the bottom left, I guess you would call it, of Lost Temple, and it's going to be Moonglade on the top. Now, either this is not a battle debt match of the recent patch, or it uh, is just a friendly uh, match that was a custom between the two. Either way, not that big of a deal. Lost Temple is out of the map pool now, of course. However, I do find that uh, Shattered Temple, I, I believe it's called, is definitely much more balanced without th without these ledges uh, that Terran cannot abuse any longer. Uh, definitely happy about that, but that's just my uh, Zerg bias. Now, um, Mouse Morrow, you all probably know him, just known for being an all-around very strong Zerg. Does very well in the ladders, especially, and we have Moonglade, who I guess would kind of be somewhat of a, a, a recent, well-known name, I should say. He's been a good player for a long time, but really his name has come out to the open lately uh, with him being in the GSL. He's done pretty well. Uh, he's just been he's been in Korea and he's been playing really solidly. Uh, just as a little bit of a spoiler though, if any of you have not seen recent GSL matches, you should probably leave. He actually did lose uh, 2 to Jaejun, uh, a very nice Terran player. So uh, that's a little bit of a um, little bit of a downer, but that's all right. Um, but it looks like both so far have just been droning up. They will both be taking their extractors at just about the same time at 14. So we could see 14-14 from them. Definitely the most standard and safe build. Uh, especially on a map like this where you could be really close spawn like we see here. Or you could even be all the way across spawn. Either way you can uh, be aggressive early on in the game and then from there contain your opponent. Or at least try to and then try to expo up. Uh, try to get an advantage that way or just keep going uh, for that huge Zergling bust and try to maybe get that right combination of Zergling Baneling and try to win over with Micro against your opponent. Now it looks like both are just doing the same thing and um, I wonder who got their gas first. Well, it's just about identical. I, th I, I believe it was uh, I believe it was Moonglade who got it first, so he could get his metabolic move just a little bit more quickly. And actually, this is a really huge deal. Oh, it looks like Morrow forgot to. Oh, he is actually going to be behind by a good ten seconds at least, which really when it doesn't really seem like that big of a deal right now. But trust me, uh, especially when you're in a Zergling Baneling war. And all of a sudden, you're trying to run away, and all you have is regular Zerglings, and then your opponent just busts out with all these wings on his uh, Zerglings and just runs down after you and is able to surround you. It really, it's just the worst way to uh, really get behind early in the game. And it looks like Moonglade, really being aggressive, is able to get out a good amount of Zerglings more quickly than we see Morrow go for. It looks like uh, Morrow might have gotten more drones early in the game. Yeah, it looks like that's what we saw. Um, and recently, uh, I played Strife Crow, who was a really nice Zerg player. And uh, he tried to do, I think it was like a th 14, 13, 14 extractor, 13 pool, or something like that, on uh, no, Blistering Sands. And uh, he, he was trying to teach my friend uh, kind of how to play it off. And one of the main things he said that I did wrong after I lost, of course I lost, um, but um, <laughs> the, the main thing he said that was that I made too many drones. And you know, sometimes you don't even think about that, but really it's a really huge deal because y you can't overproduce drones because you, do, you don't even really need them. If you're just going to be going for all these Zerglings really in the game, you're not even going to be able to spend all that economy. But it looks like we did get a nice chunk of those Zerglings were killed. We do have a nice block off here. This is definitely a very nice strategy. You're able to be very aggressive, but then when you want to, you can just back out, use a couple of Queens, use Transfuse on them, and throw down that spine crawl as well. So I like the way that Moonglade is uh, actually playing this. Now, in a Zerg with Zerg, normally players are like, oh, Zergling, Baneling, it's the same thing every game. Um, but actually, with these variations, it's actually quite the difference. And it looks like he's moving his queen at just the wrong time. We could see a run by. However, 
Uh, we were a little bit lucky for Moonglade. He actually was able to uh, only let a couple of Zerglings sneak by. In the meantime, we see that Morrow is able to contain his opponent like we said we wanted to try to do. And it looks like Morrow will be gearing up for this expansion, which is now going to be placed. And in the meantime... Um, Moonglade is going to have to get his, an expansion of his own pretty soon here. I think he's going to wait for this creep to spread a little bit so he can get his defenses a little bit more settled. And uh, he's definitely safe from Zergling mainly getting into his base. But his worry now is that his opponent is getting an expo, which he does realize he will have that Overlord planted right above it, just creeping on him. Trying to pick off a Bailing or two, very nice strategy. And you can see that Marl's just going to shift click around so that they don't stop and auto attack any uh, Zerglings. Definitely a good idea, but we can see all these Bailings go for these couple of Bailings, and two Bailings does take out any number of Bailings. And it looks like he came out ahead there, actually, because he used two Bailings. He, actually, excuse me, he used four Bailings to take out five, so. Really, any little bit counts, and it looks like we're just trying to get a good amount of micro going on. It looks like all these bailings are going to be picked off. Definitely very nice. Oh, he was using all these zerglings. He was able to pick off just about five bailings. In the meantime, it looks like we're going to get a nice split. Will he be able to do much damage? Oh, it looks like he didn't do as quite as much. Very nice split there for Morrow. Looks like he just about evened it. Maybe three or four drones were taken out. In the meantime, we're going to see purely Zerglings being pumped out at this point, and Banelings as well, of course. Now, this is definitely a good idea. What he did was allow his opponent to get this expansion up, and then, from there, he's going to be very aggressive and then take his own. Uh, one thing he can do from that is his opponent won't be able to make uh, as many units as he wants because he spent 300 on just an expansion, and from there, he can pump out a lot and then force his opponent to make even more units. So really, it's, it's it can be kind of complex, but if you get down to the basics of it, it's a lot of manipulation, and it's less about what you do, but more what about what you make your opponent do. Uh, and we don't see any banelings for uh, Moonglade here, which really can come to bite him on the butt. It looks like, yeah, he's going to be making a couple now. And notice both players are still Tier 1. Uh, very important thing to note, they don't... If, if one player was to tech, then what would be the point? Because, yeah, sure, you could have Mutalisks or something, but... Oh, it looks like a good amount of Zerglings and two Banelings were taken out. Like I was saying, you could go for quick Mutalisks, but what's the point of that if you're just going to be overrun by Zerglings anyway? So, um, it looks like we're going to get these Banelings picked off before they can more fully... And we're going to have two rogue bailings come in. Will they be able to do anything? No, it looks like the Spinecrawler was able to poke, except one is going to be able to come up. If he can come and do a lot of damage, he was able to take out a good amount of Zerglings and weaken a couple drones. I think we saw one or two drones picked off and a good amount of Zerglings as well. Just purely Zerglings being made for both players. Um, I don't know if either player is going to get to tech this game, to be honest, uh, with the rate that this is going. Uh, but we... We, we don't even want... I, I, it's debatable whether you want a little bit more creep spread too because that will start to help your opponent as well. I think this amount covering both bases is definitely good so that you can transport between the two quickly, but uh, you don't want to give your opponent a fast track into your base. And it looks like he's just going to try to scout out, see what exactly he's being morphed, maybe try and pick off a bailing too. It looks like it's going to come up. Oh, he needs to be careful with all of these Zerglings. Oh, he micro that pretty well, except uh, we saw... Uh, Morrow was able to go the route where his Zerglings were going to be, not where they were, so he was able to take out a good chunk of those. So definitely a nice play right there. In the meantime, two more Banelings coming up. This is the position you want to be in. You want to be in Morrow's position, where you're the one sending Banelings into your opponent's base, and you can be aggressive and decide what's going to happen in the game. It looks like we might get a little bit of surround, but the Banelings are here to back up the Queen. They got us back, and really, I think... I think a run-in would be just extremely dangerous. However, these Banelings are positioned very nicely. Um, if we could see Morrow just kind of run these Banelings away and then come up here, it would take a while for Banelings to react. But, oh, we did get a Roach one in the meantime. 
So that's going to be nice, not having to worry about run-ups. Going to be able to focus fire down these bailings as well. It looks like we're just going to sacrifice the rest of the bailings. Doesn't really need them. They were for a defense anyway. And now he's going to be able to switch to roaches and play a little bit more of a macro-us game. Now this is a really nice switch because he didn't sacrifice... Uh, he, did, he didn't run the risk of losing the game right there because he was still producing bailings and zerglings to be able to deal with any push. Uh, however, he was doing it... Uh, in just the right amount so that he would be able to not lose the game. So definitely very, very nicely played. And just a lot of micro going on here. I think this is one of the most uh, micro-intensive types of play that you can have going on just because there's so much going on. We can see each player is averaging just about 200, uh, which is relatively high because uh, StarCraft II time, of course, is uh, I think it's a third faster so technically um, the APM should be one and one third higher so it should be around 270 for each player which is really is pretty significant for most most Warcraft 3 players uh, who are pros um, it would be from 250 to 300 range um, so that can just show you uh, just that um, you know micro APM not that important to look at but it's it's fun to look at uh, just to see how how well uh, the players can really manage their units. But it looks like we're going to get a big confrontation. It looks like more Zerglings for Mara will allow him to surround and delay the army of Moonglade. However, just the pure amount of roaches will be able to do a sufficient amount of damage. This one Baneling is really going to be the game decider as it can come in here, explode and take out all of these Zerglings at any time. Oh, but it looks like that one Roach was able to swing around and use that Acid Spit to take down that one Bailing. Very nice play. And we can see that Zerglings and the right number can do a lot of damage to Roaches. However, all these re weak Roaches are just going to waddle away. It looks like we're going to get reinforcements. Moonglade is going to be in a pretty good position here. And... With this nice switch to Roaches, I think he just might be able to take the game, though. This combination of Zergling Roach is very deadly. Looks like he's going to try and get a good position. You do not want to be surrounded by all these Zerglings. And we're going to get just about... Oh, here come the reinforcements of the Zerglings. Definitely a very nice play. You can see that what Zerglings do is allow you to slow down your opponent. Because if he keeps running away, he will have to deal with all that damage from the Zerglings constantly poking at them. We're even going to get drones attacking at this point. And... Uh, if I were Moonglade, I would try to focus fire them down enough if I were going to lose a good amount of roaches. Now we do have four gas, so we should see... Uh, we only see one Evo Chamber. So I guess this these uh, four gas is pretty recent. They are all fully saturated, and normally you only get three when you're going roaches. You would go four if you're going to go d double Evo or if you're going to go infester. So he might do that as soon as he texts. Now we see that uh, Maro is only running on two. Uh, he was only running on two gas, and he was really fine with pumping out this amount of roaches. So I mean, I don't really know how he spent all that gas, to be honest. Um, definitely interesting. In the meantime, oh my gosh, just a lot of roaches being pumped out. So just a complete turnaround, and we could even see Infestors or maybe Hydras being added to either player's uh, late game uh, composition here. And the only really thing, real thing that I, I don't like from Morrow so far is that he does have extra mana on his queen that he could use to plant a creep tumor or two. Looks like we got a nice little scout there, seeing everything that's going on. And we're going to have the advantage in upgrades from Moonglade because he did get that tier 2 more quickly. And uh, because of that, he's going to have Roach Speed, which will allow for much better positioning. And we'll be able to run away and catch up tomorrow, too. So the Roach Speed plays a huge factor. In the meantime, uh, looks like he does have the upgrade advantage as well. So a timing attack right when the speed would finish would be definitely very, very nice. However, I think plus one attack just might be done for tomorrow by that time. So it's going to be uh, a lot of timing that's going to have to be... Uh, taken into account, and this Overseer kind of be scouting around, wants to know everything that's going on. Uh, the player who gets the first Overseer is really going to have the advantage because then he can set uh, the tech uh, for that game uh, as he can switch to whatever he wants based on what he sees. He can just uh, pump hard uh, whatever unit he's already producing. Could we see a contamination go down? He's just about to get 75, and he's going to use it on the Evolution Chamber. 
definitely a very good idea. Most players would go for the hatchery. Um, the evolution chamber obviously stalls those upgrades a lot. In the meantime, he's going to take advantage of that. He's going to have plus two just about the time that we see Marl get plus one and upgrades in Zerg versus Zerg. In any mirror, in any matchup, really, are just so important. I was going to say so importantly important, but uh, I decided not to. And then I told you guys I was going to say it. So basically, it has the same effect. And now I look dumb either way. But Morrow, wow, we have a lot of roaches for both players. Both are uh, leaning around 40. However, we have a significant, we have 11 more here for Moonglade just because he was able to uh, settle with his macro and uh, just purely pump out roaches at this time. Now, uh, a lot of you, you uh, viewers would probably be thinking, well, if one of them had just gone mutilous, he could have easily won this game. All he has is roaches. No, that's really not the case. That's not how Zerg versus Zerg works because if he had gone mutilous, he wouldn't have just, he'd have just about this amount of roaches gone because he would have all that gas and minerals spent on it. So just imagine this amount of roaches with maybe five, eight generously uh, mutilists versus this amount of roaches. Uh, you're not going to be able to defend, and if you even if you do go in with a couple of mutilists to his base, he's just going to be able to counterattack with all this. And I think we do see a nicer spread here from Morrow. We see Mutilate is inching up slowly that all of his roaches will be able to attack. He does have that plus two versus this plus one attack upgrade. We do have a couple of Hydras trying to get in this Mitch. This Queen is glitching out. It looks like he's doing a nice little Tecto dance, but in the meantime, we do see all the drones coming to take some of the damage possibly. Will... Morrow be able to hold off this huge attack of roaches from Moonglade. He does have the advantage of having all these reinforcements instantly, and it looks like Moonglade will have to back off. Very nice play from Morrow, using everything he's got, fighting tooth and nail. And I'm not sure, but I really, I think he only delayed the inevitable. He, he's been on uh, the back foot for quite some time. Hasn't really been able to do much uh, uh, except just make as many units as possible. Now he's going to be have to making drones. And that's exactly what you don't want this late in the game as Zerg. You want to be able to make just units for the reason that we're about to see. Because Moonglade has been doing just that. Getting a nice spread. Lurking up again. Getting as many units attacking as possible. Using that uh, contamination very well. This is Queen just... Trying to get rid of these annoying overseers. And the amount of roaches I think is going to be too much this time. And we could even see a GG from Morrow pretty soon here. Though it looks like he just may be able to be, uh, hold this off again. I think the reinforcements coming directly from Moonglade are going to pay off. And I think we will in fact see Moonglade take this game. Morrow is going to call the GG. And I agree with you Morrow. Definitely very well played. And yeah, it looks like that was uh, a friendly uh, custom game from the recent uh, patch because obviously it's on Lost Temple, which isn't in the pool anymore. So, wow, yeah, just a really intense game. Hope you guys enjoyed. So, before Craft signing out.